All right, guys, good morning to you. I'm going to try and keep this video about 10 minutes. So the Empire of Alexander the Great, as you know, stretched from Greece and Macedonia into Africa, Israel, the Middle East, to Babylon and beyond, into India. And somewhere around here, um the army of alexander the great decided to go no further and you guys if you watched the first video um you understand kind of the frustrations of the king alexander the great and what 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 stopped him from conquering further and so i want to pose a what if to you what if the army would have followed him to what end where would he have stopped if they would have kept going beyond the, the, the Great River and on over the mountains and into China? The Great Wall of China, I'm pretty sure, was built prior to Alexander's life during one of the first um, great emperors of China's dynasty. And if you know what's going on on my Facebook story right now, YouTubers, um, you'd know also that I just feasted at Supermoon Buffet, which is amazing Chinese food, the feast of a king, the feast of a nation, truly, <laughs> with my buddy Nick Roman. Um, but I wanted to pose this what if. Do you guys know, I'm going to show you um, something else. This is the map that came with the book that I showed you guys. Um, do you guys know who the emperor that built the Chinese terracotta army is? Do you know him by name? I think it's Shen Wang. Quin, Quin Shen Wang. I think I'm saying that right or close to right. But he built the Chinese terracotta, terracotta army around 210 BC. Um, or BCE for all y'all out there that want me to say it that way. So I kind of wonder if you think about it. What if they would have followed him beyond the mountains into China? And they would have actually met the Chinese at the Great Wall. And I mean, there may have, there likely would have been a battle just like in India. Different skirmishes, but potentially a very, very great battle. Like a initial skirmish that led to a full-on, full-scale battle like Galgamela. And so with that, you know, like depending on if they would have taken the wall... That would have been crucial because, I mean, think about it. You're going into the unknown. You have no idea what's ahead of you. You have no idea that a massive Chinese Great Wall was constructed. Now, it would have been essential for them to obviously scale that wall, take that section, and defend that section with their lives. But if you break the gap, right, and you take the section of the wall, the way the phalanx function, dude, you could totally, I don't want to say it, like you could... You know, um, you could take that section of the wall and with your phalanx on the top of that wall, you could conquer the whole of China. If they would have kept going and they would have broken through the lines or done it like by night and got up on that wall and got ample amount of soldiers, once you get one unit one way, one unit the other way, you pretty much conquer the whole of China. Even if they have thousands of them at the bottom, you know what I'm saying? And so I just kind of wonder, dude, if they would have actually followed King Alexander all the way into China, what would the world have been like if the far, far east, I'm talking like way east, like over here on this side of the, off the map east, was united with the whole of ancient Greece and into ancient Rome? What would the world have been like? How the gospel have reached the Chinese well before, you know, the the time of the missionary. And, you know, like, if you guys know me, like, I'm not just about, you know, Alexander the Great. Like, I'm about the gospel. We call this the 1040 window as Christians. It's the place in the on the geographical map where the gospel is most uh, restricted uh, where there are most hostilities to the message of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, right? That Jesus Christ died on the cross, 
that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and is the Son of God, that he died on a Roman cross in Jerusalem or near it, like just outside the city gates, that he was buried in a rich man's tomb or entombed for three days, and on Sunday morning he rose from the dead because the Holy Spirit of God entered him and he conquered death. Alexander the Great conquered the ancient world as it was known. But he didn't conquer death. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, conquered death. He's, he's got an empty grave to prove it. Disciples witnessed it. And not just disciples, the Pharisees, the Romans, and the entire ancient world, eventually, once the Apostle Paul of Tarsus was converted and shared the gospel with the Greeks. Why do you think God sent Paul, a Jew, to the Greeks? He set up Hellenization and then wrote the New Testament in Greek. Do you think that God wasn't like sovereign, even in his control of the great goat, Alexander? He can use ancient godlike kings to fulfill his own will and purpose for his son's eternal kingdom. And that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the king of of great kings. And so, yeah, I've obviously wondered what would have happened if they continued to follow their king. And after potentially scaling the Great Wall of China and getting soldiers ample enough to defend themselves and then to make like a, a big U and a fortification, and then obviously branching out, if he would have divided his army under his generals and said, all right, you go this way, around the wall and then we'll go this way around the wall right and like just to discover like the vastness of the chinese empire because i like i said dude you you take that wall and you pretty much can control the whole of china you can go around it into it if you're if you're wanting to discover something great or you could try and make peace like didn't have to be all war like once you control the high ground and control their fortification you got leverage and you got things you can can talk about, can discuss with the emperor. I mean, imagine, seriously, if, if Alexander the Great respected King Porus so much after battle and made peace with him eventually and eventually married a northern Indian tribal woman, what kind of peace could have been made between the Chinese emperor and the Greek king? You know, he wasn't all war, war, war. He was a very high-minded, peace-minded man, like making peace with other nations, learning from their cultures. And he had humility to him as well. I, I wouldn't agree with everything that Alexander the Great did. Um, he's a very fascinating man, for real. How you can unite a whole of a nation in 12 to 13 years of your life it must have been a very charismatic and um, inspiring leader, for sure. And so, yeah, we, uh, we found the Chinese terracotta army, my archaeologist friends out there, and you wonder if, if that would have even been buried had Alexander the Great and his army continued east. And, I mean, the battle, if, if that's what... A hundred years post Alexander the Great was buried under a massive burial mound with booby traps and treasures. You wonder what kind of adventures, right? We're about to get into the letter, which is super awesome as it is, guys. Like for real, his his actual words. Um, but dude, to think what he wrote to Aristotle after he got done with his conquest in India, like what other letter could have been written? if his army didn't fail him and just give up on him. <sighs> Thus far and no further, how do you keep your soldiers and your followers willing, willing to follow you wherever you would lead? It's a question I think even God asks himself. How do you find people who are willing to follow you to the ends of the earth? Would you go to the 1040 window, even if it meant your death? Christians, whoever you are in the church, 
Would you go to the Muslim nations? Would you go to Mecca and share the gospel, even if it meant your beheading and your certain death? Here I am. Send me. That should be your response. And that is mine. I've actually thought about reaching the Muslims, going to Mecca, and sharing the gospel humbly and boldly. But, you know, like... Actually, that's not... Mecca is somewhere down in here. <laughs> I gotta figure it out. There's not much but desert in here, honestly. <sighs> but yeah, to all my Muslim friends out there, Shalom, peace be with you. What? Uh, Salem, Salem. Like, the fighting that you're doing in Israel right now and in the Middle East, I mean, it's sad. And I understand that there's hostility between the Jews and the Muslims and sometimes the Christians. I know what the U.S. government has done to many of your people, and I also know what y'all have done to us. 9-11. I don't even need to get into depth on that. And I'm already over 10 minutes, and this is that's no longer pertaining to things of Alexander the Great, um, the ancient king. But yes, he made peace not with, obviously, the Muslims, but the Persian nations. Alexander the Great existed well before the prophet Muhammad, and I'm going to be respectful. I don't agree with Muhammad. Um, and I, I would, I know that there's people who would kill me for saying that he was a false prophet. I've seen it, okay, guys? I'm trying to make peace. I think that Muhammad was right in respecting Jesus, who I believe to be the son of Allah and the son of God. And I will call him. <sighs> it's so difficult. I have a dear friend named Muhammad, who's a friend of mine on Facebook. We have very thorough conversations about religion. Um, Muhammad was right in respecting Jesus as a prophet. In that way, he was true. In that way. But he was false in saying that Jesus is not the son of Allah. So therefore, in that sense, he was a false prophet. But he was right in respecting Jesus as a prophet. But he needed to see Jesus as more. And um, that's that's what I have to say. I'm going to try and say that as respectfully as I can. And if Muslims try and kill me or hurt me or do something because of what I've said, here I am. You don't mess with me. You don't mess with my people. Because you know what? There's a sovereign God over it all. And uh, one Greek with 60,000 Macedonians took over your basically whole land. And if we wanted to, we could take over the whole nations. All right, we could. And I'm not trying to incite a war. I'm really not. I'm trying to make peace with the Muslims, with the Jews, and with the Christians with the world in general and that peace is only through Jesus Christ the son of the living God so there's my thoughts on conquest the 1040 window Alexander the Great's kingdom and what would have happened if the army would have kept following King Alexander as far as he wanted to go it's a big what if Hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, like and subscribe and share it with your friends and uh, give me, please be respectful, honestly, in the comments. Like you could be funny. <laughs> you could say things if you want to make fun of me, like I'm cool with it. I make fun of myself. All right. Um, but also be respectful and like seek knowledge, seek wisdom. And we're about, like I said, to get into the, the reading and the series and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, I want to learn about Muslim culture as well. But like I said, like Alexander the Great existed before the, the Muslim religion was even a thing. And he made peace with the Persians. He married an Indian wife. And I mean, he gave, he was merciful to King Darius's queen and his family. He didn't kill them guys. I'm not trying to kill Muslims. If you're trying to kill me too, for me trying to share a peaceful message, a gospel of grace that, is about the son of Allah who raised from the dead. And if you believe in God, Allah's son, you will have eternal life. 
You will not be damned to the lake of fire. You will be in everlasting paradise. And you don't have to kill. You don't have to go on jihad. You can just love Jesus, love his father, and live forever. That's why I say, repent, believe, and live forever. Peace, my friends.